Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Ryan here from Boards and Beyond. Thank you to everyone who sent in so many questions for me to answer. I'm looking forward to answering them all. So let's jump right in. Describe a day in your life. <laughs> okay, great question. Um, the days in my life are varied depending on what's going on. I teach part-time at UConn, so some days I go there to interact and teach with the medical students. I also consult for McGraw-Hill, so during the week there will be Zoom calls and I help record and update videos. But in between those sort of working things, I spend a lot of time, I go to the gym, I play a lot of basketball, I spend time with my two awesome kids. I love to read, I love to watch movies, and I do all sorts of things like this. What made you start Boards and Beyond videos? Um, good question. A, a student came to clinic to shadow me one day, he was a second year student, and he told me about Pathoma. At this point in time, it was 2014, and Pathoma had been out for three or four years, and I was blown away that all the students at UConn were using online videos produced by someone in Chicago. And then when I saw the videos, they're very straightforward. As you probably know, if you've ever seen Pathoma, they're like the Boards and Beyond videos. And it just clicked how simple it is to make videos in our era. And I love to teach and I just thought, oh my gosh, here's an opportunity where I can take all the slides I have and all the lectures I've given as chief resident and another teaching and record them and, and make my own product. So that was kind of a, a light bulb moment and I just went from there. Why did you choose cardiology? Ha, great question. So funny story, when I started medical school, I had no idea what cardiology was. I didn't know what cardiologists did. And someone at some point told me they get woken up in the night all the time for people with chest pain, and that didn't sound like fun. So actually, I never considered it a field I thought I would end up going into. But as a third year student, I got assigned a half day a week during one of my rotations to a cardiology outpatient clinic, and that was the first time I really understood what cardiologists do. And I loved that there was old fashioned medicine, like taking a good history and performing a physical exam, but then high tech things like echocardiograms and ultrasounds and angiograms. And I loved that the acuity was high, that their stakes were high, and it all just felt like a terrific fit. Um, I wasn't immediately sold. I kept looking at other fields. I liked so many other things. I, I really loved all the specialties I rotated through in med school, but. At the end of the day, nothing was able to beat out cardiology, so I stuck with that, all from that rotation in third year medical school. Great question. Dear Dr. Ryan, why do we have to do UWorld when Boards and Beyond QBank exists? Great question. Uh, I'm very proud of the Boards and Beyond QBank. We worked very hard on it. A lot of experts contributed. We matched the questions very closely to the type of questions you will see on the MBME exams and on your actual step one exam. So I think it's a terrific resource that is sometimes underutilized, so I highly recommend it. Now, having said that, it's really a good idea to just do lots and lots of practice questions before step one. So you may want to do the Boards and Beyond QBank and also do UWorld and also do AMBOSS, but I am very proud of the questions and I think the quality is outstanding and they're just as good as questions you would get anywhere, so I highly recommend them. Do you and Dr. Sitar ever hit each other up and say, wow, these other step one resources aren't even close? <laughs> no, that's never happened. Uh, I, I emailed Dr. Sitar early on when I launched Boards and Beyond. I asked him some questions about how he ran his website, but that's really the only communication we've ever had. Um, I really admire him as a teacher. Uh, I love his style. I, I think it's similar to mine and maybe someday we'll meet up and get a nice picture, but that's never happened. Favorite medical resource? Uh, I, so I assume you mean besides Boards and Beyond, which of course I would say is my favorite, but I'm heavily biased. But outside of Boards and Beyond, my far and away favorite resource is up to date. Uh, I love that uh, resource. I use it all the time. I'm constantly looking things up when I'm in clinic. Uh, people may not realize this, but even after you finish training and you've been in attending for years, you still constantly need to look things up. There are new meds, there are new drugs, there are disorders you haven't seen in 10 years and you forgot about them. So up to date is just my go-to resource. What was the biggest challenge in creating Boards and Beyond? Um, I think the biggest challenge in the beginning was just finding the time to make the videos. I was working full-time as a cardiologist and I had to carve out time in my mornings and at lunch 
and in the evenings uh, to make slides or to record them. Um, but like I said, once I got this bug and I was really hooked and wanted to keep making videos, uh, that really became something I just sort of love to do. But definitely juggling my work full time and making videos was not easy. Favorite non-medical book? Oh, definitely The House of God by Sam Shem. Uh, classic satire of internship and residency set in the 1980s. It's a little bit dated, but so many of the themes about over-treating patients and over-treating conditions uh, is still true today. I love that book. It's always been one of my favorites. I'm interested in the field of cardiology. What are good resources and tips for cardiology studying at the intern level? Uh, good question. If you're an intern in internal medicine and you want to go into cardiology, the best advice I have for you is to be a great intern. Try not to worry too much about cardiology because you will learn all that in fellowship. But whatever rotation you're on, whether it's outpatient clinic or MICU or emergency department, you want to be the best intern possible because that's where you're really picking up lots of things that you'll use later when you get into fellowship for cardiology. And also when you apply for cardiology fellowship, you want your application to be filled with recommendation letters where people say this applicant was an outstanding person in the emergency room, in the MICU, on the renal service or whatever. So I don't think you need to focus too much on cardiology other than just appreciating all the cardiology in the patients you're taking care of. But beyond that, really just focus on being a great intern. That's the path that leads to a cardiology fellowship. Words and Beyond helped immensely since they were released during my M1. I was wondering if you could recommend or have any videos for clinical medicine during residency years for IM family medicine. As a matter of fact, I have a great recommendation. So a couple of years ago, we got the idea at Boards and Beyond to make a video series that's now out. It's called Clinical Confidence. And it's a video series that teaches you all the things you need to know to function in the hospital and the clinic. Things like how to admit patients, discharge patients, write diet orders, what are the different types of IV lines. And I wish I'd had this series when I was starting internship. It, it has so much in it that's pure gold. So if you're trying to get ready for residency in internal medicine or family medicine, I really recommend the Clinical Confidence series. Favorite Tom Brady moment? Oh, <laughs> fantastic question. There's so many to choose from. Uh, it's probably the time when he came back in the Super Bowl from down 28 to 3. I just can't believe he was able to do that. The mental fortitude you have to have to not kind of give up when it looked completely hopeless at that point. And that's something I think about all the time when things look hopeless or hard in life. I just say, man, Got to be like Tom Brady. Got to just focus in and believe and keep pushing. Uh, so I guess I'd say that one. But honestly, I, I could spend a half an hour giving you favorite Tom Brady moments if you wanted to indulge me. Can I donate my med school tuition to Dr. Ryan instead of my med school? Ha! Yeah, no need to do that. Uh, if you can get away with not paying your med school, just keep the money for yourself. But I appreciate the compliment that you've learned a lot from me. That's very nice to hear. Dr. Ryan, if you're reading this, love you, man. BNB is the GOAT. I'm an M3 now, and I'm about to sit down and watch the videos on ABGs. <laughs> well, I love all you guys, too. I appreciate all the students who watch my videos, and thank you for saying that, and I hope the ABG video helps you out. Tips to ace the Step 3 exam. Uh, good question. I think to get ready for the Step 3 exam, you first of all need to have had good clinical experience leading up to it. So most people take this at the end of their internship and hopefully you've had a really good intern year where you've seen a lot of disease and taken care of a lot of patients and all that information is gonna help you on the step three exam. I think our step two, three video series at Boards and Beyond is a great way to get ready for the test. But then beyond that, you need to just do lots and lots of questions. Um, we have a question bank associated with the step two, three product. I think that's a great place to start, but then many people do other question banks to try and get themselves ready for the test and really just lots of questions leading right up to the day of the exam. As an IMG, is it worth it to pursue masters and work in US and leave our home country? Um, I work with a lot of IMGs at UConn, the residency program there in medicine takes a lot of IMGs and I, I have so much admiration 
for what IMGs do, traveling so far away from home to learn medicine. It's really remarkable. It's something that I would have had a hard time doing when I was younger. It's hard for me to tell you whether or not it's worth it. It depends on your individual situation and how much you're willing to do to get into the US. I know the road is long, but I also know a lot of IMGs who finally made it through. They've become internal medicine doctors, board certified in the US or cardiologists, and it really is rewarding. So if you love it, you should go for it, but whether or not it's worth it for you really depends on your individual situation. How does it feel to know you contributed more to medical education than hundreds, maybe thousands of med school professors combined? <laughs> uh, thank you for that compliment. I appreciate it. Um, I will say that the, the ride I've been on with Boards and Beyond has been amazing. Uh, when I started it, I never knew it would get as big as it has. And when I hear from students around the United States or even around the world who use the videos, it just makes me so happy to see so many people learning from my teaching. So I'm really grateful for everything I've gotten to do through Boards and Beyond. And I'm grateful for all the students who've used it and told me how helpful it's been. That really means a lot to hear that. How can I remain dedicated and not burn out during medical school? Another great question. So in order to avoid burnout, you have to take care of yourself, whatever that may mean. It's different for everybody, but you need to make sure you go to the gym if that's what you like to do. If you like to play basketball, you should do that. If you like to do yoga, you should do that. Visit with your family, visit with your friends. I think. It's easy to burn out when your life becomes all consuming about medicine. Now, sometimes that has to be the case when a big exam is coming up, but the more you can find things that you enjoy outside of medical school that don't involve studying or preparing for a test, I think the happier you'll be in the long run. Because even when you finish med school and go into training and become an attending, you need those outside things that keep you content and keep you happy in your life. My question is, what is his mother's phone number so I can thank her for giving birth to him? Ha! Very nice compliment, thank you. I don't think my mom wants to, me to give out her phone number. I will tell you a story though. She went to her doctor once and her doctor had a med student with her. And she said to the med student, have you ever used Boards and Beyond? And the med student said, of course, how do you know about that? And she said, my son uh, made it. And this med student couldn't believe he was meeting Dr. Ryan's mother and was just so happy and it made my mom's day. So funny story of how the world is smaller than you think. You are based. That's all. I'm going through all your renal questions now and they're helping me review so much of the material before going into you world. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that comment. Uh, I'm not sure what based means, but I'm going to assume it's something good. So I, I uh, if that's the case, then thank you for that compliment. I appreciate it. So that's it for questions. Thank you to everybody who took the time to send in questions. It was a lot of fun to answer them. I appreciate all of you and good luck in all your studies and your future path in medicine.